Hey guys, I'm B-Boy Bill, and this is Building the Yard, Episode 2. If you didn't catch last week's episode, I'll put the link up there, but this series is about building my apiary and making more bees, a lot more bees. That is the plan this year. I had some goals for this week, and some of them happened, and some of them didn't, and I had a couple surprises, so let's get right into it. As far as the weather goes, we were expecting rain all week, and I was planning on doing some work in the in the shop and getting some equipment tuned up but that didn't uh, exactly happen earlier in the week we had some warm days and i got out to check the traps and there was one trap i was really curious about when i was out there the week before i was looking at it and there was some bee activity going in and out but they didn't look like scalp bees they looked kind of like robbers and i was wondering is this high this this particular trap has been up here almost a full year now because I didn't get down here in the fall. And if you don't get down into this area in the fall, you pretty much have to wait till spring. This is in a campground. It's not maintained during the winter. And actually the uh, the creek floods this whole campground out um, in the fall and in the spring. And so if you know the road's not maintained, sometimes they have to rebuild the road. And then you get some snow, you get a couple feet of snow on this. So basically the only way to get down in here is to snowshoe ski or walk through snow. And I was not about to do that to just to check a trap. Uh, when I did check it last fall, there wasn't anything in it, but it was before the goldenrod bloom, and we get a lot of uh, honey when the goldenrod blooms. So when I went back this week, there wasn't any bee activity, and I was able to take the trap down and take a look inside. Man, getting this off the tree, it was heavy. I, I'm guessing, I don't know, if it was 100 pounds, it felt like 100 pounds if it wasn't. And carrying this down the ladder was not fun. So definitely a lesson learned there. I'm going to want to get in here before the flood, before the snow, and make sure that there are no bees in this trap. Now, the unfortunate thing is these bees didn't make it through the winter. I'm not exactly sure why, but I did pull out a couple frames here for, for everyone to see. Just a quick peek and see what's going on. And uh, next week, I'm going to dissect this hive, and I'll have a report for you guys on what I think maybe caused the bees not to, to live. It's definitely not from lack of honey. But maybe we can get in here and figure out what's what's going on and why they didn't make it. It's unfortunate that I missed missed this swarm, and uh, it stinks because I really could have used those bees to uh, help expand the apiary this year. But if they didn't make it in the trap, they probably wouldn't have made it in the yard either. And I guess it's uh, good that I just got this down and I got another trap up there ready to roll. So the next interesting thing that happened this week is uh, snow. Now they were calling for rain all week. But surprise, surprise, I woke up to snow and there was snow in the yard. And this just goes to remind me what we were talking about in episode one, where maybe the bees that, that come through the winter and takes a little bit longer in the spring, they come they come through with a, a small cluster, but then they, they grow and expand and go crazy. Maybe they know more than we do because... Um, I wasn't planning on any more snow. We're we're in the middle of April here. It's April. Uh, let's see. It was April April sixteenth when we got the snow, and I was not expecting any snow. But maybe the bees knew. Maybe that's why that those that cluster in that hive that I've had for three years now. Maybe that is why it's so small because they just are they're they're acclimated to our climate and they they know what's going on and i guess that's just a lesson for me just let them do their thing um so far it's been in the 30s i haven't got back down to the yard and to even look but i know the bees they don't they don't fly until we get into at least the the high 40s around here so i know there's not going to be any bees out today i'm hoping that they were able to get back in their cluster and make it through the the last couple of cold days and the snow and they'll be ready to go here hopefully next week we're going to get some some better weather so stay tuned for that I'll, I'll report back and let you know how those bees are doing and the final thing that i did this week is uh started building more frames now i said i needed about 150 frames so i got my work cut out for me um, I've done 250 in the past, but I spent a long time doing it. I don't have a long time right now. So basically what I got going here is I'm, I'm getting the frames cut and I'm getting the sidebars cut and they, they seem to take the longest. So I decided to do sidebars first and get those out of the way. In the past, I used a different style push block for the table saw to make these. And I just not, did not feel, uh, confident in that anymore. I don't want my hand that close to the blade. Uh, I wasn't, I haven't done it in a while and I wanted to make sure that I, that I had my hand far enough from the blade. So I made this, this special pusher block. It's nothing fancy. It does kind of contour the, the edge where I've routed the tapered edges of the sides. So that does help, you know, maintain contact on the side of the, 
the uh, frame as I run it across the table saw and make those three eighths cuts. Uh, definitely not ergonomically correct. My hand was so sore after this; it was just it's cramped up. And if I'm if I'm going to use this long term, I'm going to want to design something else. But it worked, and I have all my fingers. I'm happy to report. So I guess it's a success. The the last part is um, I'm using reclaimed lumber for the most part. I took down a, a business that I had and I saved every screw, every two by four, and so that's what I'm working with. But unfortunately, these two by fours are filled with staples and uh, both both the kind both staples from a staple gun and from a pneumatic stapler. So I spent a lot of time removing staples to uh use these two by fours but lumber is outrageous right now so i didn't want to buy any any lumber and, and i have uh probably a hundred two by fours left to work with from this previous project so i'm fortunate about that it does require a little extra work on my part and take a little bit longer to get things done but i'm i'm happy that i have these things to work with so the plans for this week coming up let's see i got four traps out i have two more trap locations to to put up one is for a friend of mine that I gave that hive to a few weeks back when I did the one saw hive build. So I'm going to put a trap over there for him and see if we can get him some bees. I'm also going to put a trap at another friend of mine's house. And that'll be um, six traps out in the field. Now I wanted to get ten out, but I'm I'm still looking for a couple good locations. I don't want to just put them out just to have them out. And if I don't get them out, I'm going to use them for, for mating nukes. So this week I hope to get a couple more traps out. I'm also going to um, start assembling frames. I should have everything cut here in another day or two. Anybody want to pop in and have a beverage or two and help me put frames together? Um, just put me a note in the comments or, you know, message me in the thing. And uh, maybe, I can, maybe you guys can come give me a little hand with these, these things. Usually um, somebody will stop by. In the past, a buddy of mine stopped by and and we put frames together for a couple hours and and uh, have have some beverages and have some have some fun good talks. But he ended up moving away, so uh, I'm on my own unless unless one of you guys want to swing by and uh, give me a hand with that. The other thing is the next warm day, I got to get down to the yard and get that cleaned up. Now I showed a, a video of it last week. I put something up here and it's it's kind of a mess down there. I want to get these weeds out of here. And I want to get set up for spring, get this cleaned up so I have a nice place to work. A couple more things on my list. I need to start putting those hive dividers in that we talked about and get that going. I want to, I want to convert the hives from the, uh, the normal rectangular openings, entrances. I want to convert them to uh, the inch and a half with the entrance disc because I want to be able to easily close those down if I get robbing or for the winter with the mice. I've been putting hardware cloth on and stuff for the winter to try to keep the mice out, but I just don't like that method. The bees get all jammed up against the hardware cloth, the dead bees, and you can't get them out of there so easily. So I definitely want to do something different. And I'm looking at these entrance discs. So I, I have some hive maintenance to do and, uh, you know, just typical stuff. See if anything needs repainted and, and stuff like that. But I'd love to hear what you guys are up to in your apiaries and if you've got anything done in the last week. And plus, you know, let me know about the, the weather in your area. This is uh, this is crazy. I can't believe I'm still getting snow in April. I guess I can. You know, we've gotten snow later than this. But I mean, I, was, I guess I was so hopeful that we were going to be moving into swarm season right around the corner here. And it's looking like uh, at least a couple more weeks, which is right on par with the, the data that I've seen in the past. Uh, we don't start getting swarms around here until usually like May. But let me know in the comments below what you guys are up to. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't, please subscribe. I appreciate it. Thanks for all your comments from last week. I'm B-Boy Bill, and thanks for watching.